everyone. Solomon 11. He's in his Tina House Hotel. He's just taken this stunning girl from a beer bar off Bangla Road. Aerobics. Short time. 3,000 bats costing him. And it is absolutely rubbish. This girl looked amazing. Um, oh, total waste of time and money. Absolutely awful. Not happy. And he's like, that's it. There's your money. Get out. After an hour, waste of time. Threw her out. Paid her. She don't care. She's happy. So you see these stunning gorgeous ones, they just, they're not the best aerobics teachers. They're not the best. Anyway, sleeps. Morning. Sleeps in a bit. Gets up. There's no breakfast at the hotel. You can have breakfast there. You can buy it, but it's not included. He gets up, wanders down the beach, back to that bar, that dolphin bar, gets coffee, takes some time to wake up, eventually wanders along the beach to cafe and gets a breakfast. So he needs a different plan of action. Expensive, good looking girls, Bangla Road. He's disappointed, it's so expensive. He really needs a freelancer. Or a beer bar, maybe the other ones on the second road. Maybe they'd be cheaper. So he thinks, ah, he'll have a walk up later to those ones behind the market and see the prices. And he just mooches around, looks at some of these tour companies and see what's on offer. There's all the islands, PP Island, James Bond, and all the other islands where the movies were made. He hadn't come here for that. He'd come for the hedonistic holiday. But he wanted this to be his last time in Thailand. He wanted to get it out of his system. You know, he was getting that bug. He just didn't want it. He knew nothing good could come of it. So he wasn't going to do the islands. But he was studying. He crabby, was the back of his mind, crabby, crabby. And he thinks, if this Phuket is so expensive like this, it's just going to cost a fortune. And the girl's just really not doing it for him. So he mills around <clears throat> for the day. Bit of a sleep in the afternoon, off out early, about 6, 6.30, up the road from the hotel, those beer bars, he thought, right, I'll get myself a girlfriend for the night, we'll go off and get a meal, have a girlfriend experience, and he has a quick walk up the six or eight bars looking, one catches his eye on the other side, so he goes to that bar, drink, starts chatting to her usual, then he asks him the price. What's the bar fine at this bar? 500 bars. Much cheaper. And he says to this girl, she's you know, quite good looking, but a little bit different shape. A little, bo little bit heavier build, but really nice and cheeky. He says to her, how much? Short time. 2,500 bar. And he said, what? This is a beer bar away from Bangalore Road. How much long time? 4,000. This is not happening. It's just, it, nah, it, forget it. Does his drink. He said, right, freelancers, let's go and locate some. And it's early. Out of the complex, heading up Bangla Road. He thinks, right, got to find out where all the freelancers eat, drink, where they are. He seems to remember something, beach. And he's thinking, Patea, beach road. They, in the daytime, they're going to be Miller around there, early evening they're going to be around there. Into Bangla Road, walking through, not seeing any. Place is only still, just starting to come alive. People coming to work, the girls. Gets down to the beach end. There's like a police building, a tourist police there. And he flicks around the corner. And then there's a lot of concrete seats as you go along the beach. Sure enough, freelancers all the way along. Thinks right. Let's find a freelancer, let's just find the price out. What's it all about here in Phuket? And he walks along 50 yards, 100 yards. One girl on her own sat there, quite pretty. Goes over, sits down next to her. Says hi. And 
their English is reasonable and he's just straight out with it. What's the price? prices for girls here? There's no bar fine, but there's no comeback if there's a problem. You've got nowhere to go back to. It's a gamble. 2,500 bar. And it's like short time. 2,500. This is freelancers asking the same price as the girls in the bars and things. He didn't even bother asking how much for a long time. And that's it. He's like, nah, I can't be bothered. He just, he's like, this is me getting Thailand out of my system. I'm going to man up tonight. Not taking a girl. I'm just, that's it. I'm not into it. Phuket, Phuket. Beaches are beautiful. Shops are prices. It's all tourists. But it's gorgeous beaches. He knows those lovely beaches, knows all about the islands. This would be a perfect honeymoon location. Really great place. However, it is not the place for a hedonistic holiday. There's no speciality bars that you could spot. There was nothing of where there was, you know, like the Eden Club in Bangkok. You think, this is not going to work out. This is a beautiful place, but it's not for this type of holiday. It's crappy is still in his mind he's like crappy right he's walking along the beach he thinks I'm gonna go back to those bars near the hotel just get hammered these little tour shops he stops off at one little girl in there speaks good English like crappy how do I get there how much choice by minivan it's about um, 1200 baht to go round or he can get a boat from Phuket town and the minivan will pick you up from the hotel take you to Phuket town to the port put you on a boat it goes to PP Island which is half more than halfway you stop there for a bit of snorkeling walk around the beach and PP Island for an hour you can get back on the next boat go to Krabi and it's only a few hours and he thinks well okay um, and it's something like 1200 bars, 1500 bars, for the whole package, he thinks, that's it. So he takes, books it, next morning he's gonna be going. Gives all his details, hotel and everything. Off he goes, long to the, there's three beer bars on that corner as you come down from his hotel. Spends a the night there and he starts, he meets a few other people chatting away as you do. There's a few girls there. Um, and he starts to get a little bit drunk. But he thinks, I'm not going to get too hammered because I'll have to get up in the morning. No girls there that he fancies and he thinks, hmm. But yeah, he gets hammered. <laughs> we always do. Everyone does. He got hammered. Luckily enough, it wasn't too late. And he crawled back up to the hotel. He successfully gets up in the morning checks out minivan turns up 10 minutes late uh, it's already full the minivan so it's already done all the hotel pickup so that was good anyway it flipped round the corner along the beach back up shot off down to Phuket old town dropped everyone off at the port all well organized really good <coughs> boat on you get hour two hours across PP Island People were jumping off the boat and snorkeling as it, it sort of sat next to PPR before it went to the beach. People were snorkeling and he's a bit of a hangover. <laughs> you know, nah. But it looked pretty. And he went to the beach. Everyone gets off on the beach. Loads of boats there. And he straight to a cafe. Coffee, more breakfast, chilling. Another beer, of course. And uh, that's just to wander along the around the PP, around the main beach area and the beach on the other side back to the boat on the boat our Krabi Unang is the area in Krabi where he landed um, didn't know too much about Krabi but knew there is nightlife there and it was a lot cheaper than Phuket it comprised of along the beach there were shops, he got off at, at this area and walked along, 
his case. But he could see there was a bit of a beach, shops, he could make out maybe some bars up there. But to his right was a road going up, and halfway up he could see maybe 150 metres of McDonald's on the left. But it looked like lots of little hotels um, up that road. Appeal though. Okay, pull the case, it's light. And he wandered up that road. Um, and he spots some complex on the right. There's this little alcove, a little little dead end road you can see. And there's about 10 bars there. And he thinks, mm, here we go, there's some nightlife. There's some bigger hotels and resorts, shops on the left. He walks past. And about the third hotel up, there's a big mountain behind, well, big hill behind, rock faces. Looks a bit scary if that came down. Anyway, he comes to this one, looks in the reception. Uh, nice guy, speaks English, I think he was from Norway or somewhere. Norwegian, and says, uh, we have rooms, we have pool, swimming pool. Oh, okay then, thousand bar. I said, come look at the rooms. So, took Solomon's case off him, through the reception, through a bit of a dark reception area, round to the right, and it opened up, and there was a nice swimming pool there. There was a, again, it's a bit like the Jed P. Nong in Hawaii. There's a bit of a cafe restaurant bit over in the corner with a cover. Nice rooms, two story, nice pool. But there was a gap there between the buildings, and there was the rock face going up right behind the rooms. Like, ooh. Okay, thousand baht. One of the rooms next to the pool, perfect. But it was just a normal door and a normal little window. Basic room, nothing special. Double bed, shower, safe. Um, he said, yeah, that'll do. How long? No idea. The guy said, okay, no problem, let us know. We've got a few empty rooms, we've got no, not too full at the moment. Perfect. So this is just what? Just after lunch again, it's two-ish. Fouquet he's given up on. He's seen PPI and the basics. He didn't go the walk all the way up to the top. He's now in Krabby, Onang. Fantastic. Hopefully, a lot cheaper. Hopefully there's stuff to do here. You got it? He has a quick swim. And there's a girl. He loves these girls by the pools. There's an older woman and there's a little girl that works service. She's nice. He, I wonder, <laughs> what's the chance on one trip? Chatting away to her, he's having a swim, he gets a beer brought to him. He's like, yeah, restaurant, hotel girls. Anyway, maybe I'll stay a couple of days, chat that young lady up. Eight he goes. It's changing it, right, let's go explore. Walks down the road, McDonald's, he thinks, why not? Western food. And it's, it's sort of spread out a bit. And he thinks, oh, maybe I'll get myself a bike, motorbike here. Because it is probably going to be spread out. I might need to get around a bit. And right opposite McDonald's is a woman with bikes. And it's about 300 bars a day. Um, so he thinks, yeah, why not? I can have a wander around on a bike, love bikes, decide what to do tonight. He goes across, rents a bike. It's just one day. Okay, pays the money, passport, all the rest of it, takes photocopy. Just a little step through, Honda Click. And next to the bikes, he can see again, it's that lane where there's about 10 beer bars. It's too early at the moment for them, but they're there. It's right, clocked on the bike, down to the beach, along the front, halfway along, centre point or something, there's a load of bars there, that's good, got them, marked, keeps on going, there's a bit of a marina, then the road goes round, big hotels and things, resorts, then it comes into a sort of, next to the beach there's some nice restaurants, on the other side there's market, and there's a couple of bars up there as well, and then it seems to just go on for nothing nothing up there so it's only about a mile mile and a half long and he thinks that's it that's all Onang is it's just one road down one road along a bit of a wiggly bit and it keeps on going but he thinks okay we've spotted three areas of bars 
it's very laid back there's backpackers floating around here um, he stops at the far end there next to the beach parks a bike gets a beer thinks this will do maybe I'll have a couple of days chilling here to recharge the batteries and he then starts formulating the plan you know remember start furthest away from your hotel with a girl and you're not going to bump into that same girl the next night but here there at Onang it's small you probably are going to bump into the same girls <laughs> yeah there's beer right back to the hotel drop this bike off change go out a bit later that's the plan oh we've gone on again time how much of the girls in Onang? Mm, you'll find out on the next one. <laughs>